and let them have dominion. The kingdom of God is within people. It's the advancement of the people that is advancement because of the kingdom. Because faith must be backed by the assignment of this ministry is found from that verse. Where we You're unto a word encounter as Pastor David Ogweli ministers God's word to you with simplicity and power. God bless you. He created them to control the earth, to control the circumstances on earth, just like God controls the heavenly. We carry something here that changes the destiny of societies, nations, and all of that. And what do you see me do? I'm just scratching it. Don't look up to me and think I'm a model. I'm only to exemplify possibilities. God asked me here, you know, to tell you about something. It's time to transit to the full man of God that you are. Listen, my job is to bring you forth. You are bigger than me, far bigger in expressing the glory of God. Far, far, far. Did you see what happened to Elijah? There was one woman that frustrated that man, almost sent him out of ministry. A Jezebel. One woman was messing up Elijah. Yet Elijah had this thing. Elijah had nations and had the, pro the prophetic. You, you know, after all prophets have come and gone, they picked two as master examples and that one was one of them elijah and moses he had these things in him he had what john the baptist was doing later but guess what he only went to the mountain and brought fire and brought a nation to repentance and people thought that was the powerful thing he did not know that elijah was not exhibiting not even up to 10 percent of his ministry what you will see in me is not it's not all these things are not the potential of this ministry has not been touched because the potential is in what god will do with you now one woman was almost frustrating this guy out of his ministry was that woman called jezebel yet one of the people jehu one of the people who realized his own potential by meeting elijah Jezebel was like a small meat for him. He said, we say we want to build a university. He's a big headache for me, as you see. We, we have to raise a generation of businessmen, wealthy men. He's a big headache for me. If you see how the thing is pursuing me around, like now sometimes I, I go back to God. I said, Ah, I thought you said they are here. You say Abraham, mm -hmm. here am I. He said, Leave thy fathers, I left. He said, Ah. He said, princes and kings are going to come out. He said, generations of mighty men. He said, it's not you. It's not you. Release Joseph. Release Joseph. Release Jacob. Release Jacob. Release. That's what I came here to do this month. Release Jacob. The thing is not you. Release Jacob. It was Jehu that will take care of Jezebel. It's not you. But if you don't release Jehu, Jezebel will be your problem till you die. It's not you. You are not the one to handle Pharaoh. It's Joseph. You're not the one. There is a, a Judah inside you. The center we know the Bible. There is a Judah. You're not the one to carry the ark. There are people that are going to carry the presence of God in a mind-blowing manner. We are going to scratch the thing. We're going to have men who will be passing and dead people will be rising. They are here. Your ministry season has come. The season has come. The season has come. My friend, this is your season. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. This is your season. This is your season. This is your season. This is your season. My God, this is your season. This is your season. Step out. And you know if tomorrow God tells you to start something, I will back you up. Don't be limited. Don't feel uh, we are in the middle we are in this. Don't feel limited. Express the fullness of what God has put in you. This generation needs what you are carrying. This generation needs what you are carrying. This generation needs what you are carrying. This generation needs it. You know, at certain seasons, until you learn to abide in it, beyond the skills you go to learn, beyond what you are taught, there's certain grace that will come upon you. Certain times, it will just be there without you doing anything. Certain times, you get very close to God a little more, it comes stronger. It's a certain grace that will be coming on you. 
and whenever it comes it will be awakening your own mandate your own gifted your own equipment it won't be something acquired it is something that will be in you and and that equipment it awakens in you use it a minister it if, if it produces a faith for the impossible act on it you will be seeing things you'll be seeing all kinds of strange things you'll be seeing all sorts of things because your ministry is in your belly your ministry is not things you learned your ministry is a part of your being you carry it within you it bonds within you the burden that you carry often that's the ministry that god has given you find that thing that burdens you all the time find that thing that god keep raising find the anointing that comes on you find what he enables you to do and then when that anointing comes on you and you start doing what is not meant to do you will notice it will start turning down it will kind of start lifting it will kind of start getting straightforward and when you move back in the direction of what is meant to do in other words you're going to rediscover yourself in the course of doing things and ministry you're going to discover yourself. you will discover the areas you step into you start struggling you discover the areas you step into some amazing grace just functions through you without much struggle and you see the result in the lives of the people that's your field that's your ministry that's your equipment stay strong in it you will see where it will take you is your gift that will open doors for you it's not you that will open door for your gifts is your gift that will open door for you it will bring you before great men it will take you places that your money can take you it will bring you contacts that you can buy with. it will it will it will while i'm alive stay in touch with the source of your inspiration after god has taken me off he will come and begin to talk to you like he did to joshua moses my servant is dead now therefore i arise but i'm telling you now your time of rising your time of manifestation is right now it has come there is no more future to it is now begin to decode down the strategies because this anointing will teach you what you need to do it will give you strategies it will enlighten you it will open your eyes it will give you understanding it will illuminate your mind begin to package the things that the anointing is bringing across to you and prepare yourself for your season of manifestation the lord said i'll come and stand with you and i'll take up the spirit that is upon you and put it upon the 70 elders a new generation of leaders i imagine carrying the rod of god in their hand having what it takes to divide the race having what it takes to shut up the pharaohs having what it takes to meet the needs of the flock the flock will not just see you as mere appointees you you'll be able to stand and speak and they will see the water divide you'll be able to stand and address the situation and they will see the hand of god manifest they will know that these are men of god that god has anointed them and sent them you'll be able to function in the authority of your office and the lord said to tell you be bold in this season be very bold for i will stand with you i will walk by your side to confirm the words with signs and wonders don't just be a secular person before the people stand as a priest stand as a king stand as a prophet for these are your three mandates stand as a priest stand as a king stand as a prophet and declare my oracles and you will see my glory manifest i want to visit my people in this hour these are the seasons of the glorious church the world is hungry they want to see the manifestations of the sons of god they've cried for the solutions that the church has to offer it's time it's time to distribute the resources of the kingdom it's time to distribute the resources of the kingdom and quench the test the heart of the testing and quench the heart of the hungry and meet the expectations of the poor and the meek brothers and sisters it's something i want to tell you you know africa our time has come in nigeria especially because we're going to be at the forefront of what god wants to do with the black race the question will be what do we have to give to the nations that will be the question 
what do we have to offer what is the content our season has come the world is going to look up to us for solution the church now will have to offer solution to the society to government and that's why the prophet spoke that the mountain of the lord's house shall be exalted above the mountains and all nations shall flow into it the nations are coming because they're coming with problems they are coming with solutions the question will now be what do we have to offer what do we have to offer are they going to come and be disappointed and go but isaiah the prophet wrote about it, he said that nations shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of your rising there are things that god wants to teach the world through the church in Africa now if all we have to give is salvation we have not yet got our mandate salvation by faith is the mandate that was given to Europe it was part of the mandate that was on Europe they gave it to the whole world they restored the knowledge of redemption to the world holiness was where their mandate ended by the time they were able to bring back the revelation of holiness and God began to conclude their age it was these two revelation that they took across the Atlantic Ocean to the nation called America to birth a new nation that became the most powerful nation on earth it was these two revelation that caused the missionary activities that took them to the ends of the world including this continent is this two revelation it has built churches all kinds of churches that are still with us today now america picked that button from europe and their own season came america gave us pentecostal movement in 1904 at azusa street god restored back pentecost after what he did in the upper room in jerusalem and so the baptism of the holy spirit speaking in our tongues with the attendant manifestations of the spirit that came along with it that was america's mandate that was america's season with that came the emergence of what is called the independent ministries and so out of that two great ministries have come great men of god have come that we read about in history the Smith Wigglesworth, the Oral Roberts, the Kenny Haggins, the great healing evangelists, the William Brahams, and the rest of them. Great churches have also come. Pentecostal churches, charismatic churches. The blessing of the move of the Spirit, the operations of the Holy Ghost, has gone around the world because America fulfilled her mandate, the church in America. The question will be what's Africa going to give to the world? What's Nigeria going to give to the world? What is our message? What do we have to offer? What exactly does God want to give to the nations in our own season? You see, when God began to use America, what he did in Europe now look like the old wine. Because they did shake the world with a message of redemption, salvation by faith, and a message of holiness. And they brought reformation the people that embraced the holiness message were called puritans they brought reformation across the world they wrote the constitution of nations they invented democracy america now has come and with the pentecostal revival they have brought a lot of blessings on the world What does Africa have to offer? The prophecy has already said it, and the prophets wrote it in the Bible, and the spirit of prophecy has revealed it in our time. Towards the ending of the 20th century, God began to speak this across the whole world, in Asia, in Jerusalem, in US, in Europe, in different meetings in Africa, that Africa is his last joker before the baton goes back to israel the 
Westerner is I'm asking you what is Africa supposed to offer to the world? What is your message? Many of you don't have a message. You probably try to preach prosperity because our robot has got preached it. What are we supposed to give in our old age? I want to say it. If you ever forget this, if you ever forget this, you probably will throw away your part in this end time army. Because it's the most important thing you need to have written on your heart right now. And then go back and begin to ask the Holy Spirit what it means. And ask him to give you understanding of what it is. You want to know what God has raised Africa to do. To give the world the kingdom. To restore. All of this was lost. After the Jews dropped there is the restoration of the gospel of the kingdom. That is our message. That there is a gospel that redeems not just the man, but the whole society where he lives. A gospel that when he's brought back, he shakes even the Muslims to his core. Because the Muslims are looking for the kingdom. They're not looking for Christianity. They don't want to convert, but they want the kingdom. They want to go to heaven, for example. They don't want to go to hell. They want society, a good society. They don't want poverty. Who wants poverty? The kingdom is God's total answer to man's total needs. The kingdom is what you give a society. The society gets healed. The kingdom is what heals society, heals families, and heals institutions, and he brings back restoration. The kingdom is to actually give people a foretaste of heaven. The second thing Africa is supposed to do is to reproduce or manifest or release whatever word the glorious church is to prepare the church for the return of Christ you know he's coming for a church a glorious church and the glorious church is a holy church but that's the part Nigerians had and they preached that one a church without spot and wrinkle you remember that part but a glorious church it has segments of what constitutes that glorious church. For example, it's a church that is exercising financial dominion. You heard that the mountain of Lord's house shall be exalted above the mountain. It's a church that's included, endued with God's wisdom and has solution to the problems all around. It's a church that is actually lifted as a mountain, not a valley. It's, it's a place that people look up to. It's even feared in society. It's revered. That church actually causes society to, to know that God is God. When you get to the move of the Holy Spirit, it's a church that is not having like what America gave to us, a few Moses will rod. It's a church that operates like the Joshua era, the tabernacle, where the army, the people carry the presence of God. People will be healed in the streets. He, he doesn't have to be a pastor. He can just be an ordinary businessman or cadre rider. He can walk into a hospital and discharge that place. Discharge. Clear the word. Because the glory rests on the house. The tabernacle now is the church. America brought Pentecostalism and the era of superstars. The church God wants to see now is where if you touch the hem of the garment, mm. that's the least member of the church, you shall be made whole where the members are carrying the glory of god now this is what i want to work on I, i'm working on two things now i'm working on the container the structure that will carry this thing uh, that's why i'm bringing the marketplace we have to understand all those things to be able to create for god that tent because the tent is one thing it requires skill to do that one but there is something that will come to inhabit it that glory that people walk into service you don't need to let them know that God is here. You know they don't believe it. The Bible says they walk and fall on their faces among you and confess that God is in your midst. How I many of you are aware that God is here, for example, now? Now, there is a difference between when we preach and come to share. Now, now, the glorious church has seven major... I'm going to show you the seven things that constitute spiritual success because I'm going to work on you. You know, I'm talking from the big picture. I'm going to zero it now to you because if it starts with you, it starts happening. So... I'm talking about three levels of success, the spiritual success, the soulish, mental, and emotional success. 
but we talk about developing iq and eq and sharpening ourselves to the highest level of that and then of course physical success which is health and wealth and that seems to be what nigeria guys are preaching health and wealth even the world even the world if you see what is coming if you see the kind of wealth that is coming if you see the kind of glory that is coming upon the church when the prophet saw it he said nations shall come to thy light kings to the brightness of your rising it has been dark now it's like the church has gone silent it's like a toothless bulldog listen my friend out of this disorder the earth would have from a void the holy spirit is incubating now looking for men out of this organized we're going to hear a roar a thundering voice of god that is going to come a message that will be clear distinct and, and unique and the people of god will hear they will know that god is speaking are you hearing what i'm saying it's a governing church it's a governing church the church will be operating a parallel government with the federal government if you're in a state we'll be operating a parallel government with the state government but the state government will be coming to this government of god to learn how to reorder their system how to reorder the society because it, it, it will be like embassy you know how nigerian government consults the american embassy in nigeria they go to consult uk embassy they ask them to bring them expatriates to help them streamline their economic system streamline a few things that's how they'll be coming to us ask us to donate wise men who will come over take up a consulting work for them in this field and in this field and help government put society back to order for the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our god and of his christ that's the era now that's where we're going where we become the carrier of the glory where we become the carrier of the glory what will cause men to see god That's the age now. That's the age now. It's a complete package because it's God's complete total answer. The highest peak is where Israel will take it. Africa will get it somewhere. Israel will not take it before the master returns. Because we from here, Israel is going to wake up from sleep. That sleeping giant that started this walk. There are people more dangerous than Apostle Paul sitting down there. You have not seen anything. People more dangerous than Peter sitting down there. They are going to wake up again. The destiny is going full cycle. But God has something for us. It's a glorious church. What is a glorious church like? That's why the last time I asked the question, how do you, let me ask it again. And, and really, everybody should take this very seriously. How do you pastor a Jesus Christ? He's 12 years, he's probably 18, he's probably 25. His ministry is going to be starting five years from now. God puts him under you for five years. How, what do you say to him? What kind of things should you be teaching him? That's the kind of thing you should be asking yourself and start developing those things. You are talking to the people who are the solution to the problems of society. How do you pastor a John the Baptist? Knowing that in about three years too, he will be dead. But his ministry is going to, he will achieve in three years what probably other people don't achieve in a lifetime. He's carrying this thing that you heard that Elijah took back to heaven, or as a part of it fell on another man. He's carrying it. How, how do you train him? How do you train a Joseph? What kind of training do you give him? Do you give him only Bible where you know he's going to handle the economy of a nation and that the starving people are going to depend on that man? The whole economy of the whole nation is going to depend. What kind of training will you send him for? How do you train a Daniel? What kind of training do you give him? I'm begging you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Even if you want to limit your own training as a Jacob, don't limit Joseph's training. You may not have all the things to give to Joseph to get into where he's going. Point him to that place to get the remaining things. The era of the church and the kingdom it's not about natural genealogy. It's not about tribe. It's not by borabo. It's not by tribe. It's not by sex. The sisters, let nobody cheat you out of this thing. Don't assume that it's the brothers that must have it. It's not. In this season now, it's not a matter of male or female. It's not a matter of Greek or Jew. How 
how we want it, you know, some of us wanted to go to our tribe. So I wanted to go to male or female. I want to say this again to sister. Because, you know, why, why I have to liberate you is that the culture already, the different things are already imposing limitation. Marriage, all kinds of things, childbirth. If you don't know what your destiny is and go for it, forget about it. Nobody's excluded. That's the mystery of the New Testament. Everybody who pays the price can get the article. What God called us to do is to raise kings, priests. So when they look for me, they say they can't see me. You will hear lions roaring everywhere. Everywhere. Pouncing on the prey. I'm bringing back the spoils of the battle. I sat down to ask God a question once. I said, a natural seed, probably that they walk in your will. What would, is anything for him? He said, of course, give him a portion of what the children should get. I said, what kind of portion? He said, if you pass the anointing, he won't get it. It will wash off. It won't. So the only thing I can get is natural things that I can see if there are cars or things I can write in my will or land. I, I say, okay. They will call it those ones and say, this, uh, uh, my father was this, was a reformer. That's what is true. Leave your father's house onto a land you don't know. It happened to Jesus. Most of his family members thought he was a crazy. But James later got it. He later got it. But where, where but Judah and the rest of them, I don't know what happened to them. Nobody heard about them. But James got it. But what we are saying is that Jesus did not carry it and just drop for James. He, he is a generation of sons who took nations. I'm going to advise every one of you in, in the next, this remaining two years, go for your inheritance, my friends. Go for it with everything you have. With everything you have, go for it. Remember that once you have got it, it is without repentance. Nobody can take it from you. Learn how to honor life sources. Because there is no amount of teaching that can give you these things. There is no amount of training. Learn how to honor life sources. Learn how to honor life sources. Without contradiction, the less is blessed of the greater. That's why even Abraham, who had the promise, gave that honor to Melchizedek. And Melchizedek blessed him. That's how every Abrahamic seed gets it. That's how it travels. That's how it travels. The ones that don't get it violated the principle of honor. They violated that principle. They have violated that principle. And let me mention seven things is the ministry of God the Father. You have to know it. If you are talking about bringing the kingdom, you know that we have the king himself. The ministry of God the Father. For that's where everything ends. You have to know. There is a person. He is a person. He is a person. And uh, the other day I was thinking, God is the principal. Then he gave us his word as the principles. Uh, the principal and the principles. Who is actually higher. Uh, on one angle, I would say God has exalted his word above his name. Mm -hmm. His name represents his person. So uh, that's powerful. So you said the, the kingdom of God has the rule of law. That means the principle is higher. But is it really true? God is sovereign. God is a sovereign being. He's not answerable to any court. Not answerable to any house of assembly. Answerable. You can't impeach him. It's not. You can't even sue him. Yeah, they talk about immunity. It's not. 
what he has is beyond the immunity. He can't, can't be sued. He can't be questioned. Read your Bible. There sometimes the sovereignty of God is mentioned in Scripture. For example, when Isaiah started writing, he said, My purpose shall stand, and I will execute my counsel. He, then he said, He is the one that when he moves, nobody can say, What doest thou? You can't question. You know, if God does like this, inhalation, everybody breathe in. Breathe out. You see, when you breathe it in, it had no effect on the atmosphere. You are the one that got tired. If you overdo it, your lung will blow up. It's like balloon. So each of our lungs is like container. You fill it with water, it's all right. But if God breathes in to fill his lung, every life will cease. Because what you call life is just a little oxygen that came out of his nose that ignited all of us. What I told you is in the Bible. I mean, he said if he withdraws back his spirit, all flesh will perish. So even Anua's flood, when he got, you know, he said he repented that he made man. I don't know whether he thought about collecting back his bread, but he didn't. He sent flood. Bible said, and when he sent the flood, every living thing in whom is the breath of life perished. He didn't try bread, withdrawing bread. If he did, Noah and every other thing disappears. He's sovereign. So if we're going to bring the glorious church, we have to recognize back who God is. And what he simply means is that what I'm, I'm trying to tell you now, brothers and sisters, is that when we gather like this and especially as pastors when you come to church first of all understand where you are in the list i'm going to put it the other way. you're not the big guy you're a small person don't handle the pulpit carries don't act as if you're in charge of the service recognize other people there are ministries for example now this morning the holy spirit had done some things in people now that i didn't do did you see, even before I could get into the world to do what a pastor is called to do, he had moved, he had done some things. And when he started moving and I yielded to him, the level I yielded, he has already established some things in people. You see, some of the things he has established in people is going to affect years of their lives now. Left to me, I will just come here, teach, and go. But that's your call to be a teacher. It doesn't mean that God the Father, his ministry is teaching. There are a lot of things he does. Let's allow him to be God in the church. You can imagine a service where these seven things can be allowed to function. Can I show you what they are? Yes, sir. You want to see? Yes, sir. Now, let me tell you what I'm saying. For example, now, one of the things I'm trying to let you know is that angels are no more doing their work because we're no more recognizing their ministry. Oh, we don't know these things anymore. The church must wake up. The era of the glorious church has come. So we don't recognize these other ones. So we are now trying to do everything. And we are so limited because you call a carpenter in an assemblage of men and women who are trained to build. You have messing men, you have electricians. And the carpenter thinks everything is by use of nail and hammer. Your ministry is just one of the tiny things. Joshua marched around seven times. Did Joshua push down the wall? Who pushed it down? The other people now working with us. He said that they that are with us are more, more than they that are with them. We have to recognize this. Thing. This one we are going to invade with in this hour. This one we are going to invade with. When, when I can't reach that sister at home, her child is dying in the night. Say, Father, let your angels that can pass through walls. He said, it's already 1 a.m. We can't find taxi. I can't find anything. Let Michael, let Gabriel, let some angel go through the wall now and reach her and call back that child that is dying back to life. We have collapsed God to what man can do now. We have collapsed God. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. This is what the Lord was explaining to me in Port Harcourt. I summoned people on the stage who were deaf to pray for them before, you know, those thousands of people that gathered for that night of glory. So before I went there, the Lord was explaining something to me about, he said, can somebody come near me? Just, you know, 
I'm about to pray for him now. He needs healing in his body. And the Lord said to me, this is where you are. This is earth. I'm telling you about God the Father. This is earth. This is the person you are praying for. This small, this small you. This is earth. This is heaven. This is where God Almighty is. He said prayer travels this up before it travels down. Even if you pray and the miracle happens in seconds, don't assume that it's your mouth that made it happen. It goes, it comes. You know, like broadcasting, this service, the whole world can see it. There are things now they have that can pick it up and shoot it up to satellite in space. And the next thing is CNN, everybody can have it. Eh? That's exactly how it is. He said, the fact that you said, out! And the devil came out. It's not you. It's because I backed that word up. It's because I backed it up, my friend. That smaller demon than that one that came out can stand there and you say, out! He's just be looking at you. If I slap that your eyes. Call another place. You know, demons are a very stubborn group of They are rebels, you know. So if not that you are a servant of God, I can see the protection of you. I will just put two fingers in those eyes. When you get home this night, that will be your last time you can see anything. You will learn to stop insulting your elders. But, but guess what? If we talk about the second person in this order, who ministers every time we gather? Every time. It's Christ. This one that died for us and rose again. He's a person who he comes to church periodically periodical the one that he sent to be there all the time is the holy spirit but many times he comes not in the person of the holy spirit himself and he was letting me know that there are many times he will come to church he's not allowed to do anything we don't even recognize him we don't know our probably we think that the trinity their only role is in worship they are to be worship and at the end of it they should clear from the way time for pastors mm -mm. they have ministries they have what ministries. ministries they have what they do in the lives of the people that a pastor a prophet a evangelist cannot do don't you understand that if it's only my ministry that is keeping you you have finished this you are probably backslidden because uh, there were even some times and seasons you went through something none of us were there that's when some members complained Nobody even cared. Nobody because everybody people are not supposed to be there every time. Yes, there, there are seven personalities designed to work on every believer. Seven. Seven personalities. Let me list. So he said, look at just prayer. We, one of the ministries of the Father is ministry of what? Answers to what? Prayer. One of the ministries is ministry of confirming distance. Yet it can happen great. He said, Why the are you speaking? I have heard. Why the words are still in their mouth? I have confirmed. Look at that. You can imagine a lot of energy we waste in prayer that will be converted to a result if we can understand. Look at how, 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 many, how many minutes did Elijah pray? How many hours did the prophet of Baal pray? He just came farther. It will be known today that you are God and that I have done these things according to your work. In other words, in the church, we're not just supposed to go on executing programs, draw programs. It's not just anything you get up, preach. We're supposed to consult. And then, if it's the days of prophet, you brush off here and start declaring things. And he's not behind it. That's where he withdraws his approval. He said, that man has gone, but I did not send him. He's telling the people, he shall be well with you. When I'm angry with the people. Because what we are saying here should be in line with what is in his mind. I like how David said it. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord. We are not the boss. So let, let me list out this. I will not be able to deal with it now. This is the end of this part. Please play the next tape in the series.